a homeless street addict on the streets of the downtown east side of Vancouver called Bud Osborne. It was the area with the worst addiction in North America. And Bud Osborne was watching his friends die all around him. People would use behind dumpsters to, so the police wouldn't see them. But obviously, the police can't see you, no one else can. And Bud said, I've got to do something. I can't just watch all these people die. But he also said, I'm a homeless street addict. What can I do? He had a very simple idea. He just said to all the other addicts, why don't we start just patrolling the alleyways? Why don't we just start, when we're not using, we'll have a rotor, we'll patrol. And we'll monitor each other, and we'll call an ambulance. Let's go to Bud Osborne, um, okay. speaking in 2011 at a health harm reduction in the law forum in Vancouver. A flame burst inside me, fueled by grief and rage, like a spontaneous, fierce combustion flashing up through my nervous system and roared in my head like a psychic explosion because of another because of too many, because of an unnecessary overdose death, yelled two words repetitively in my head, no more, no more, no more, of this heartbreaking, family-shattering, community-diminishing pain of overdose deaths. That was Bud Osborne. I feel a bit emotional looking at that. The What Bud achieved was incredible. So. Overdose started to fall because they're doing these patrols. And then they started to get a bit energized, and the addicts started to think, oh, maybe we're not the pieces of rubbish that people have been saying we are. Maybe we can do things differently. They started to learn that in Frankfurt, Germany, they'd opened safe injecting rooms where people could use legally and be monitored by doctors, and it had massively saved lives. So Bud and his friends, a big group of them, started to stalk the mayor of Vancouver everywhere he went. A guy called Philip Owen, who was a kind of right-wing businessman, think Mitt Romney, right? A guy who said that addicts should be taken and put in an army base somewhere, right? For two years, they followed him everywhere he went with a coffin. And the coffin said, who will die next, Philip Owen, before you open a safe injecting room? This goes on for years. They get a bit demoralized. And one day, to his eternal credit, Philip Owen just says, who the hell are these people? And he goes and he meets loads of addicts and he spends a load of time on the downtown east side. And he opens his heart and he says, I had no idea it was like this. And he holds a press conference and they have the chief of police and they have the coroner and they have an addict. And he says, I'm never going to talk about addiction again without having an addict here. We're going to open this first safe injecting room in North America. We're going to have the most compassionate drug policies in North America. They open this injecting room. Philip Owen is deselected by his own right wing party because they're so appalled. He's replaced by a candidate who continues keeping the drug room open for a more liberal party. And, you know, it's been 15 years now, 10 years now, sorry. And the results are in. Overdose is down by 80 percent. 80 percent. Average life expectancy in that neighborhood is up by 10 years. Those are figures you only get when a war ends. And I spoke to Philip Owen, and he said it was the proudest thing he ever did. And he would sacrifice his political career all over again. And looking at Bud, I was thinking, you know, Bud died last year. He was only in his early 60s. But having been a homeless addict during a drug war, it takes a toll on you. When he died, they sealed off the streets of the downtown east side where he had lived. And they had this amazing memorial service. And there were a huge number of people in that crowd who knew that they were alive because of what Bud had done. And I would say to anyone watching this, you know, it's so easy to feel daunted by the big political challenges we've got. It's so easy to think something, something as huge as the drug war. You are so much more powerful than you know. Bud was a homeless street addict, and he started a movement that has transformed Vancouver, transformed Canada, and saved thousands of people's lives. If he can do it, we can do it. This war has been going for 100 years. We can end it now if we choose.